Hey Pokey friends, before we begin, this is a disclaimer saying this is my own opinion slash theory. I do not know if this is true, but the facts and timelines do make interesting points. Generations 7 and 8 gave us regional variants, which are retyping and redesigning Pokemon from previous generations. They first started revising Pokemon exclusively from Gen 1, but have opened up to more generations such as Gen 2 and Gen 5. Some people say these redesigns are new gimmicks of the franchise to make old Pokemon fans, <coughs> Gen 1ers, <laughs> actively interested in Pokemon again. While this is undoubtedly true, we're going to dive deeper into this theory pie. For this pie is not one flavor, oh no no no, there is some zest here. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start off with the biggest and main ingredient of this pie a broken type meta, specifically for the first generation of Pokemon. Pokemon types in Gen 1 usually have a formula. Grass types usually had a secondary type of poison, fire was predominantly monotype, and water types usually were monotype or got a secondary type when evolving. There was only one dragon type, one ghost type, and Alakazam was a powerhouse. Even with Gen 2 and Gen 6 creating new types and retyping older Pokemon, Gen 1 still had one big issue, no dark types, and one minor issue, one steel type only. Even though Pokemon had five generations to fix this meta, they really did not solve their Gen 1 problem. My theory of how the Pokemon franchise solved this issue was with redesigns. They first did this with Gen 6 with Mega Evolutions giving Pokemon that had a fairy aesthetic a fairy mega evolution, finally making Charizard a dragon type, and really leveraging Pokemon with newer types Dark, Dragon, and Fairy as a secondary type to balance out their meta. Though this would start to fix their meta, they also created an issue, broken Pokemon teams, specifically relying on Pokemon with mega evolutions. People knew if you had a certain Pokemon in your team, it was going to mega evolve and you can use only one Mega Evolution per battle. The Pokemon company became aware of those issues and wanted to correct them. This is where Gen 7 became a game changer, regional variants. Have you ever noticed there was only two non-regional variant dark type Pokemon in Gen 7? Incineroar and Guzzlord, a starter Pokemon and Ultra Beast. Yet we remember so many dark types. My theory is, the Pokemon company created regional variants to add a more range in typing, specifically a way to correct the typing issues in Gen 1. They did this by giving Pokemon that already had a dark type narrative that dark typing. Look at Meowth! Meowth had already been the evil villain with Team Rocket and the cat mouse narrative with Pikachu, but Meowth was a normal type. In Gen 5, they added the Purloin line, which is almost a one for one with the Meowth line, but they made it a dark type. Now they finished what they started and made a dark type Meowth line. Along with that, Fairy, Steel, and Dragon typing. Look who joined the party! Alolan Ninetales, Alolan Dug Trio, Alolan Executor, you get the idea. They were rewriting their meta wrongs with regional variants. Now for the first seasoning on this theory pie reviving forgotten Pokemon, and creating thematic designs. It has been mentioned Darwinism has been an inspiration with the regional variants, and it adds lore to these Pokemon and regions, which is fun and creates such amazing fan art. But my theory is the Pokemon franchise has taken this one step further and are choosing to redesign Pokemon once we're overlooked or forgotten. Marowak was just a ground monotype before Gen 7, now being Fire Ghost and being redesigned as a Fire Twirler, referencing Hawaiian culture. The ghost typing can easily be referenced with the Cubone lore, an orphan wearing its mother's skull. Same thing with Raichu, gaining a secondary type Psychic, and being Surfing, which is a franchise reference of Surfing Pikachu, along with Surfing as being a sport and activity in Hawaii. It is easy to say these Pokemon were very forgettable, but now have a place in the meta typewise. This also gives the Pokemon company a chance to redesign Pokemon and add more features to them, such as hair or body extensions, and really connects Pokemon designs with regions inspired by international locations. This can be applied to Gen 8 with Surfetch, Opsagoon, and so many more Pokemon. 
which is amazing and something that I hope happens in future generations. The second seasoning, which the fandom murmurs are going to be louder and louder with Gen 8 or Gen 10, reaching 1,000 plus Pokemon entries. It's insane to think over 25 plus years, we have such a plethora of Pokemon and we're going to be approaching 1,000 soon. But there will be some backlash about this. We already hear from Gen 1ers and old time Pokemon fans of keeping it 151. As an avid Pokemon fan, I suspect the franchise is trying to crawl their way to 1000. We see each generation of Pokemon with less and less new designs, after Gen 5 with Gen 6 being the lowest number of new Pokemon. My theory is the Pokemon company is using regional variants as a means to add new designs to the franchise while avoiding the 1000 entry implosion. But what will happen when we get to the 1000 entries? Does anyone know? Does anyone care about reaching 1000 Pokemon? In conclusion, regional variance was the recipe created and served to fix issues that were not seen when the franchise started. By giving Pokemon two regional forms, we started to expand on the Pokemon teams and ways to play Pokemon and connect with people in the Pokemon community. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.